It's the last month of the year, so let's see how I plan to spend my money and how I was able to meet all of my 2020 financial goals through budgeting throughout the year. Hi, it's Shayna with Well5, and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. And it is the month of December, the last month of the year, holiday season. And this is when people tend to spend a whole lot of money. So let's see what I am spending my money on. Let's get straight into my budget. With any budget, you have to start with your income. So for the month of December, my income has declined again. And the reason for that is because I'm trying to meet a lot of my financial goals. So I have been tweaking with my 401k contributions and also with my tax withholdings to make sure that I'm not over contributing to taxes for the 2020 year. And as a result, all of that means that I am taking home a lot less money. So for the month of December, between my two different sources of income, I am taking home $9,968 for the month of December and it's still pretty good despite the fact that I have I have increased my 401k contributions so much but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video now I'm going to go through each category of expense within my budget and how much I plan to spend of my income within that category so within the first category, it is giving. And I always set aside 10% of my income towards tithing. And then I also set aside a little bit of money each month towards gifts. And so this is December, it is Christmas. I celebrate Christmas and I buy Christmas gifts for my family during the month of December. And so because I have been setting aside money every single week towards, or every single paycheck, towards my sinking fund for gifts, I was able to use that pot of money from my simple bank account to be able to pay for all of the Christmas gifts for my family, plus my boyfriend and my sister's boyfriend. And it covered everything. And so I'm gonna to continue to do that. And so starting off with this paycheck, I am contributing money into my sinking fund for gifts for 2021. And I'll continue to do that all the way through, what is it, Black Friday um, of 2021. The next category of expense within my budget is related to savings and investments. So I already mentioned that I've been doing a lot of tweaking when it comes to my paycheck withholdings. And I've done a whole lot of changes when it comes to my 401k. So that means that I'm now contributing a lot more money to savings and investments. So although this is not a part of my budget, I did want to explain a little bit about what I'm doing and why my take home pay has been impacted so drastically. So I decided that I wanted to change my 401k contribution. So that's my pre-tax 401k and my after-tax 401k. So I just found out maybe a month ago that I had the ability to do after tax Roth in plan conversions with my 401k with my job. So I decided to take advantage of that. I can contribute 10% of my after tax income into this after tax Roth in plan conversion <laughs> account. And it's also called a mega backdoor Roth. So I've been utilizing that. So that has also shrank my take home pay a little bit as well. And I've also increased my 401k contributions because I realized that I actually was going to be a little bit short for the year, especially since I started this job back in April. And so I had to increase my contributions pre-tax and after tax. And as a result, that impacts the amount of money that I'm able to save in my high yield savings account. So we probably are all thinking that, you know, with the pandemic, what is a high yield savings account nowadays? Well, actually I was able to find one with T-Mobile. And so I, I'm a T-Mobile customer for my, my phone and T-Mobile customers are able to sign up for a T-Mobile money bank account and that gives you 
interest on or APY on the first $3,000 that you save in their bank account. So I actually switched all of the savings money that I had to my T-Mobile account because I earned not only 4% on the first $3,000, but I also earned 1% on the remaining balance, which is higher than any of the other high yield savings accounts that I have. So that impacts the amount of money that I now am contributing each paycheck towards that. And as I mentioned before in other videos, I am putting aside that money right now so that I can be able to pay off my student loan debt, which I've already started to make payments on. And I'm going to do a video very soon all about it. The next category of expense within my budget is related to utilities. Typically, I pay for four different utilities. But this month, I only have to pay for two. So the four that I typically pay are electricity, water, internet, and phone. However, for this month, I do not have to pay for phone or for water. So let me explain the water situation. I had an issue where my garage door was broken. It actually was broken for like over a week and even throughout a power outage due to, what was that hurricane? Hurricane Zeta, I believe it was. So it was out, like it was not functioning <laughs> for a little while and they, the property management company was unable to find someone that would fix it. So they gave me a $150 credit towards my account. And because my water bill is paid out of my, my rental account, I guess, um, that credit should be able to cover my water bill for the next few billing cycles because every time I do get a bill, which I'm not really sure the cadence of it, it's either every two or three months, but every time I've gotten a bill, it's only been about $50. So that should be able to cover me for the next three billing cycles or so. So I don't have to pay for water. And then when it comes to my phone bill, I'm actually on a family plan or really a business plan through my dad's business because he's the account holder now. And when you look at the bill for my line, my bill comes out to $50.51. But I found out that my company actually will pay upwards to $50 towards my phone bill every single month. So technically all I have to pay is 51 cents towards my phone bill every single month. And so when I found that out, I actually put in a expense report backdating all the way to April and I was able to get all of that credit and I'll continue to do that moving forward. But the reason why I'm not even paying 51 cents towards my phone bill this month is because I actually realized that I had been overpaying the phone bill on my dad's business account for my my line i think i had been paying like 79 dollars a month rather than 50 dollars and 51 cents so i'm not paying the phone bill for a couple of months <laughs> so that is why i don't have to pay those two utilities all right so let's talk about the food budget the food budget is just going to be insane this month because not only will I continue to get my meal delivery, which I'm not sure if I've updated you all yet, but I decided, decided to make the switch between Fresh and Lean, which was the company I had started off getting meal plans through, but I've now switched to Freshly because it actually saves me $50 a week on the meals, and it's pretty much the same thing. It's really tasty. The meals get delivered to my door and all I have to do is pop them in the microwave and eat them. So yeah, I'm saving $50 a week by switching to Freshly, so I'm excited about that. And actually, I have a coupon code for Freshly. If you're interested in trying it out, check out the link down in my description. So aside from that, I'm still getting the meal plans, but you know, it's Christmas and we celebrate Christmas around here and I'm actually hosting Christmas for my immediate family. And so they're gonna be traveling via um, car to come visit me here for Christmas for a couple of days. So that means I gotta be a good host and I gotta buy groceries for seven people. <laughs> Uh, we already have the shopping list. My sister has already planned out the shopping list. She told me what I need to get. And apparently there's a little L-I-D-L -L now, which is like an Aldi derivative or whatever. Um, she told me that there's a new one in Atlanta 
actually close by where I used to live. And so she was like, you can pick up all that stuff for less than $100. But then there's this whole other grocery list <laughs> as well for Christmas Eve, which we haven't priced out yet. So all that means that I gotta spend a lot of money on groceries. So this might just be a tentative food budget, but yeah, the food situation is looking kind of expensive for the month of December because I decided to host Christmas this year. All right, so when it comes to transportation, most of my expenses are staying the same except for my car insurance. So my car insurance premium is due every six months and I last paid it in October. And they actually reduced my premium by like $100 or maybe a little less than $100. And so I used to have a sinking fund set up for my car insurance, which I was contributing $150 a month to. But with the drop in my premium price, I only need to contribute like $134 into that sinking fund to be able to have enough money to cover my premium when it becomes due in April and I'm gonna actually make a few changes probably when April runs around uh, rolls around when it comes to who I use for car insurance but we'll talk about that later but I was able to save a couple of coins with my auto insurance all right let's talk about my personal category of expenses so within that category I have like I guess subcategories that cover clothing household supplies my housekeeper and like fun money for myself. And so this month, that budget has like drastically increased. As I mentioned, it is Christmas, so a lot of things are changing. And although I had a sinking fund set up for gifts, I didn't have a sinking fund related to Christmas decor and just Christmas spending. <laughs> and that's something that I actually wanna consider redoing when it comes to my budget for moving forward for 2021 especially if i plan to host christmas again there's a lot of expenses related to christmas aside from just gifts and i'm learning that <laughs> this year so i've had to buy a whole lot of decor for this house because Look, I just can't do it without the, the Christmas decor. <laughs> I have to do it. So I bought a lot of decor. And then aside from that, I have my housekeeper come in twice this month. Um, she's coming right before my family comes. And then she's also going to come right after they leave. So that has also increased my budget for personal expenses for the month. The last category in my budget for this month that has a change in it is related to my debt. So I mentioned to you all before that I do have consumer debt again after paying off like over $60,000 worth of consumer debt. I do have a little bit now and it has increased again. So the reason why it has increased is because I decided to buy a dining table and I put that dining table also on my PayPal credit card which has 0% interest. And so right now what I'm paying off on my PayPal credit card is the couch for upstairs and then also the dining table that's downstairs and I already paid off the coffee table and I have those payments set up on auto pay so that way I'm able to pay off those things before I accrue any interest and they accrue interest after six months of you know them being on that credit line so I'm making sure that I pay those off and I don't plan or foresee adding anything else because I don't buy all the furniture that I need to buy and will buy for a little while. So I don't plan to have any more consumer debt after I pay off these two things, these two items that are on my PayPal credit. But I am making a little bit of payments or a lot of payments actually towards paying down my student loan debt. And so I thought that the, the CARES Act would be expiring at this point. Although I guess in the back of my mind, I thought that it would get extended a little bit because we are still in the same situation. Um, but the original plan was for the CARES Act to expire, expire actually in in September but then it got extended to December and so I was like you know what let me go ahead and pay off my student loans by December so I started to make payments towards my student loans actually like late November so I paid off a 
good bit of it but then i just recently found out that they've extended the the cares act or the forbearance at least until january 31st but that's actually not going to change my plans in terms of my debt payoff but i'm actually using some of the money that i had been saving already so it doesn't really come out of my current budget because i already have this money saved up in my savings account so i'm using that to pay down that debt and i'm getting closer and closer to being debt free so there were a few categories that i didn't mention such as housing and health and a few others because the amount of money that i spend within those categories really don't change from month to month and there weren't actually any changes in the month of December. So that's my budget and how I plan to spend my money in the month of December. As you notice, I'm taking home a lot less money, but that was because I'm trying to ensure that I meet my financial goals by the end of 2020. And I was able to do that. So, so far through budgeting, I've been able to max out my 401k, contribute an extra 10% after tax, into my 401k in addition to maxing out my IRA plus paying down my debt, namely my student loan debt and probably reaching other goals that I can't even think of right now. So I'm just so happy that I've been able to meet all of these goals and achieve all this throughout the month of December when people spend the most amount of money and you know, just do all this through budgeting that has really been very critical to my financial success to date because you know that i started off with one hundred and eight thousand dollars of debt back in 2017 and i'm so happy that i've been able to make such significant strides in my finances so if you are interested in checking out more of my videos i would love to see you and i'll talk to you next time